Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Tonight we are talking all about Cricut Infusible Ink and all the things that we should and should not do on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So Cricut Infusible Ink is a really cool new product from Cricut that allows us to basically put an image onto a t-shirt, a tote bag, a coaster, all the, lots of things and instead of it being a vinyl that sits over the top of it, it actually infuses into the material. So it's weightless, seamless, there's no edges, and it lasts a really super long time. And I have done a lot of videos on infusible ink showing lots of things. We've talked about how to do just the basic, use a transfer sheet and put something onto a, um, I think the first thing I did was just a little test on some material. And then I did the the pens and the markers and onto coasters. And then we did a t-shirt where I layered the infusible ink transfer sheets and put it made a t-shirt. And then we did a infusible ink video on all the different things. Oh, a tote bag. Yes, I did my mandala tote bag where I actually drew everything out with the with the pens and then transferred it to the Cricut tote bag. And then we did a video on we've done a lot of video guys. <laughs> we've done a lot of videos. And then we did a video on um, t-shirt, mandala, oh, all the different blanks that you can use, right? So lots of different things beyond Cricut blanks are possible with infusible ink. And then last week we did a video on lots and lots of t-shirts. All of the t-shirts from 100% polyester all the way down to 100% cotton. And then we also looked at pastel shirts and the black shirts and how we could get the infusible ink onto black shirts. So we have really really looked at, oops, my easy press is beeping. We've really looked at a lot of infusible ink projects. Tonight, I want to intentionally do things wrong so we can see what happens. Because Cricut tells us there's a bunch of things that we need to do, right? And I wanna go over a couple of those so that we know. So for example, they tell us that we need to put our, um, we need to lint roll our t-shirt. We need to cover our t-shirt with butcher paper, or sorry, our shirt, our project to be covered with butcher paper. We need to preheat it in most cases. We need to protect our pressing mats. We need to use a pressing mat in the first place. We need to um, press for a certain amount of time. And then of course, you, you guys have also had questions that have come up during our videos. Like what happens if you just take a pen or marker, an infusible ink pen or marker, and just draw on a t-shirt and then press it. Like what will happen? We don't, I don't know. We're gonna find out tonight. Uh, things like that. That's the kind of thing that I want to just do wrong and we're gonna see what happens so that we can just test all the things and, uh, and now we don't have, now we know the answer to what if we did this, right? And in fact, I'd really, really love to know what you guys would like me to test tonight. So in the comments, please let me know what you're most looking forward to learning about tonight. Do you want to find out what happens when we don't press it long enough or press it too long? Do you want to know what happens when I use my iron instead of my easy press? I can't test a heat press. I don't have one, but it should be fine. Lots of people have said that's fine, but I do have an iron so we can totally test with the iron. Do you want to know what happens when I press it and we move the easy press or the iron around on the image? Or how about when I draw on an easy press transfer sheet with a marker and then we press it? Or what happens when we press it twice? So we put one transfer sheet on and we press it and then we put another one on our shirt or our project or material and then press it. So I'd love to know what you guys are interested in. And I see a question, I see one right now that says, what happens if we do it on 100% cotton? Guess what? We did that last week. So I am going to share with you an image right now. In fact, we're going to switch over. I'm on, I'll go ahead and do this, Greg. We're going to switch over, switch over to my work surface. And then I'm going to share with you this image here. So this is an image from last week's plate test. So you can see here, this is exactly what we did during last week. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, we have 100% polyester. So, and then moving across from left to right and then down each row, we go all the way down for lower polyester count in our shirts. And that last one in the lower right corner, that is 100% cotton. 
And all of these uh, infusible ink transfers that you see here, they've all been washed once so we can see what happens. So you can see the higher the polyester count, the more likely, the more vibrant it is and the less likely it is to wash away. And you can see that 100% cotton down in the corner there is really, really faded and washed out. So that is what happens when we use 100% cotton. Okay, so, <clears throat> thank you, Kat. I'm really glad that you liked my video. Awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna dive in and we're gonna see what happens when, and I have a bunch of like different things. I'll be watching for your comments so that you can let me know what you would like me to try. I have nine hearts to try tonight. My goal is to keep this video to one hour because we have dinner time after an hour at, at eight o'clock. We've been eating very late this summer, mostly because of the videos, I'll be honest. Okay, so I wanna start with what happens if you don't use one of the easy press pressing mats? So we kind of try to go in logical order. Okay, so this is an easy press pressing mat. They sell them in three different sizes and I've been using them for every single one of my projects. And Cricut recommends this. They say it really makes a difference. I would love to know how much of a difference it makes. I feel it's going to. It's a very stable, even surface, unlike a towel. But hey, why don't we give it a try and see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna set this to the side. And we're gonna get out this nice pink towel instead. Let's move this over here. All right, so here is a pink towel <laughs> instead. And this is a folded towel. Now, the reason why I chose a folded towel instead of the easy press is because Cricut says that we can use a folded towel when we do iron on vinyl, right? They say this is fine, so I thought we should try with this. And what I have done is I have taken a white shirt that we know works really well with the, the um, infusible ink, and we're going to do swatches and all the different things because we want to make sure that our material and <clears throat> our infusible ink material is the same so that we can compare them and see how they did. Okay, so this is our pressing mat instead of an actual pressing mat. We're going to cover it with cardstock, okay, because if we don't, then it's possible that either this material could, this color could transfer onto our shirt or our infusible ink could transfer onto our towel. And uh, we don't want that. So you only need to have one, but I have a bunch, so I'm just using them as anyways. And oh, we need to do this properly so that we do this test. So we need to lint roll our shirt like that. So get off the lint. And then we need to preheat it, okay? And we're gonna use our butcher paper. So it's important when you use your butcher paper that it's the same size as your easy press or your heat press um, that you're using. So this, it's gotta be the same size or bigger, okay? So we're gonna preheat this for 15 seconds because our goal is to use, to, to do everything the same except for the one thing that we're changing. Um, so that we can, there we go, so that we know what the thing is that we're changing and so we can compare it, right? So we have to have controls and everything in our little experiment. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna preheat this for 15 seconds. There we go. All right, so our shirt is there, our little, our little piece of shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and place the heart onto our material. And it's sticking down pretty well. Now, if it weren't, I would want to use the, the Cricut heat resistant tape to keep it in place, but it's fine. <clears throat> All right, so let's try pressing this with our towel. Now, I have this towel folded as evenly as I could get it. Like it feels as even as possible. I'll be honest at the edges, it feels like it's raised up, but it's just because of the nature of a folded towel, right? Which maybe that's why it matters, I don't know. All right, so we're going to, um, the Cricut Easy Press Guide says to, move this over here so we can see. It says to heat for 385 seconds, oh sorry, 385 degrees for 40 seconds. And that's what the heat guide says to do for a t-shirt using the transfer sheet, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay, lower it right down just like this and I'm gonna start it. And it says to use light pressure. 
So we're using light pressure. And we're going to see what happens. <clears throat> um, I see lots of awesome questions here about, someone is asking about cork. That's a really great question. I have no idea if we could put infusible ink on, on cork. I know we can cut some cork out. People have done that, but it's got to be pretty thin. I never tried putting anything on it. It might be cool though. You know, it might make a cool trivet or something like that. But I don't know myself. Also, for the sake of this experiment, I'm not going to wait until it's completely cooled down, guys, because we will be here all night. So that's one thing I'm going to change. They do The directions do say to wait until it completely cools before you remove it. And if we do that, it's just going to take a long time because it takes a while. <clears throat> when we first do this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, when we first, like right now, it's 258 degrees approximately. <laughs> um, and it'll take probably, I don't know, a few, three to five minutes before it cools down completely. I recommend that you do let it cool down because if the way infusible ink works is that when we heat it up, it turns into a gas. And as it cools down, it solidifies into our material and infuses right into it, which is what's so cool about it. And if we're not giving it time to cool down, then we're potentially, we could cause ghosting, like that sort of thing. However, we're just going to do what we can do tonight. So, and I'm going to just attempt to remove it quickly so that it doesn't cause an issue. So we'll see. Okay. It's hot still. All right, let's do this. All right. So this is what we got when we used the towel. So what we see in the middle here, while this is very pretty with the little kind of lighter spot in the middle, this is called ghosting and it happens when we have an uneven surface like this. So, or when we've moved our easy press or heat press, which we didn't move it, you guys all attest to that. So, because what's, it's not, it can't lay flat on it. So it's getting an uneven heat coverage. So while this looks kind of cool because it's a heart that's shaded now, this isn't really what we're looking for, right? So, so I'm gonna set these over here in the Cricut and I want you to just put the little note about what they were so we can compare them at the end. So that was using a towel instead of using the Cricut, uh, uh, the Easy Press. Oh, and um, Susan asks what product did I use to check the heat? This is a E-Tech City infrared thermometer that we got off Amazon for not very much money. Um, I think I haven't linked it in one of my tutorials. If you're interested, just search or just search for infrared thermometer. This is, um, it's useful if you're trying to check, you know, like, the, th the temperature of pretty much anything. This is Greg's toy that he's letting me borrow. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanna do is try doing it. We're gonna get rid of this towel. Towel did not work, guys. No towel. We wanna go back to using the, uh, go back to using our Cricut, our Cricut pressing mat. Uh, because this is, this has been working really well for me. So you can get these off Cricut. At common and unfortunately I want you to can you guys see how um, I'm gonna kind of angle it this is the stack of cardstock that I had sitting on the towel do you see how it's bent it's been pushed down that towel was a lot softer than the easy presses my normally my sheets never bend like this so we can see right there that there was an issue with the pressure using the towel instead of the pressing mat so I don't know that might even yeah, this, I don't know. It could cause an issue. I'm going to, I'm going to, in fact, I'm just going to like ditch all these. Would you get me some new paper instead of, because I don't trust that paper anymore. It'll be over there on the old computer. Okay, so the next thing I want to try is not preheating it. So I'm going to take another scrap of t-shirt. Again, this is polyester. This is 100% polyester. This is not the Cricut brand. This is the Hanes Cool Dry t-shirt that I got on Amazon. It works really well. Okay, so we're going to try this without preheating it to see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. There's a question. Can you use a pad on the bottom and in the middle of the shirt? Two pads for one press. Yes, Lori, you can. And I did that in my, in fact, in my video from last week. It's exactly what we did. I had the, uh, the big mat um, on the surface here, and then I put this mat inside the shirts to protect the underside of the shirt as I pressed. So, yeah, you definitely can do that. All right. 
So we're not going to, I will lint roll it, but I will not preheat it. So preheating it is supposed to sort of uh, pre-shrink the material and remove moisture from it that could get into the way of us transferring our image successfully. That is the purpose of preheating our material. Okay, so let's put that heart on there. Nice and smooth, that looks good. All right, so this test is um, no preheating, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this. This kind of wants to stick up. Let's see if I can do this. All right, and I have to do this. We're gonna just do it like this. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right. For 40 seconds. <clears throat> It's really important that you not move your easy press around. We're going to do a test where I move it around so we can see what happens. But generally speaking, like we're not going to do that at any time except when we want to. Holly asks if I've tried it on glass. I haven't because glass doesn't have the kind of surface that would accept this ink. It would have to have something sprayed onto it that like a polymer. And I don't know, do they make clear polymers? They probably do. Maybe polyurethane, it probably would make it cloudy though. So I don't know if that would work or not. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried it because I don't think that it would work. I tried wood a couple weeks ago when we did one of our play tests and it was not, it was not successful. But I have heard since from someone who tried it and they were successful. And I think that the, our material was different or perhaps... Um, their wood was coated and my wood wasn't. I don't know yet. So, but if there was a coating on there that allowed for the infusible ink to uh, bind to it, so like perhaps a polyurethane, maybe. I mean, polyurethane, is that a polymer? I don't actually know. It could be, maybe not though. <laughs> um, then that might work. I don't know. So let's see how this looked. All right, so this is the test with no preheating. Let's see if it made much of a difference or not. So this looks really good to me. So in this case, preheating it was not necessary. That said, I'd still preheat it, but it did, it looks, this looks like the way I would expect it to look. The red is perfectly solid and vibrant. There's no ghosting. The edges are very sharp. So, um, I'd still recommend you preheat. It doesn't take long to just do a little preheat, um, especially, you know, if it's an important project, but it looks like, you know, now I am in an air conditioned room. If you don't have air conditioning and it's the middle of summer and it's humid, you can have different results. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So that is our test with, um, no preheating. There we go. Okay. So, what if we don't use cardstock to protect our mat? Okay, so Cricut always recommends that we use a piece of 80 pound white cardstock to our, on top of our pressing mat when we press infusible ink materials. So I want to know what happens if we don't, okay? Which of course is risky, but we're gonna use an old mat that I have that I've already damaged <laughs> and have uh, used since, so I don't think that it has, um, it's going to transfer. So here is a mat that I accidentally put my uh, design on the wrong way, and you can see that I completely messed it up. So, but I've used this several times since, so I don't think anything is transferring anymore. Uh, I'm still going to put it up here in this section, okay? So no cardstock on this mat. Instead, it's just going to be our piece of t-shirt. And we're going to lint roll it. Make sure that there's no dust on it because dust could interfere with the transfer, you know, with something that you can't see with your eye uh, when you're first looking at it. And then we need our, dis oh, we need to preheat it, right? So let's do that. So we'll preheat it for 15 seconds, which is what Cricut recommends. <clears throat> Kimberly says, you're going to say to use my, my messed up mat. Yeah, totally. This is my messed up mat. Hey, I didn't throw it away because it's great to, um, you just never know what, how you could use this. So I kept it and I'm glad I kept it because now I can show you all my mistakes. Oh, this is interesting. 
It's totally transferred <laughs> to my butcher paper. <laughs> hey, look, it took some of it off. I should just do this again. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to use a new sheet of butcher paper here so that we don't transfer anymore. Okay. So here is our pre we have preheated and lint rolled that shirt. I'm going to go ahead and put this heart on here. <laughs> Where do you get butcher paper? I got this big roll. Oops. I just dropped it on the floor. I got this big roll of butcher paper off Amazon. Let me show you. Big roll of butcher paper. It was really inexpensive. I have a link for it on, I think in all of my tutorials that use butcher paper, I have a link to this roll of white butcher paper, but you can probably also find it at your grocery store. Um, what you don't want to use is wax paper or freezer paper. If we have time and a heart left over, we will try that. I didn't prepare it for tonight, but I just, I just thought that that would be a good exercise. Okay, we preheated, okay, we're ready to go. Okay, let's see what happens when we press infusible ink without a protective uh, piece of paper under our mat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure what's gonna happen. I, I'm pr I don't know, but I feel like we probably are gonna see some of that red come through to the other side. I'm not positive actually, maybe it won't, I don't know. I've always followed the directions when it comes to protecting my mat. Um, since I've had infusible ink, so I don't actually know what's going to happen. So Joyce says, can you reuse pa butcher paper? Yeah, I, I, I've done this one twice. You want to make sure there's nothing transferred onto it and then it's fine. You know, um, you just keep an eye on it. When I did my test last week with 20 t-shirts, I only used a four sheets of butcher paper among all the tests. I just kept reusing them. I just made sure that there was no ink transfer onto the butcher paper before I used them. Uh, Janet says, does it matter what side of the butcher paper is face down? They're exactly the same on both sides. The, um, if it has a shiny side, it doesn't seem to matter. So they should be uncoated on both sides, but if it's shiny, it may just be the way that it's process. There should be nothing on your butcher paper, no coating or anything like that. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the reason why we don't use wax paper or freezer paper is because they do have coatings on them and it can transfer that coating, that plastic or wax coating to our project. And I have seen that happen to people's um, heat transfer vinyl projects. Look, we took off some more of my mistake. I should have just done that to start with. I completely forgot that we can do that. All right, so let's see what happened with our project. So first of all, it transferred just fine. That looks great, which is what I expected. So let's see if anything happened here. It stuck down a little bit to my mat. Um, so the only thing that I see is that some of the blue that was just a little bit of blue that was on here, it, it got stuck to the back of my shirt. So I don't see any heart, however, on my mat itself. Um, I still, th but I want to show you one that we did last week. Was it last week? Yeah, the t-shirt one. So I did a yellow t-shirt last week and my paper didn't extend all the way to the edges of my mat. I just had it underneath the infusible ink uh, decal. Can you see the yellow uh, banding here on the sides? That was transferred from my t-shirt, my yellow t-shirt. It transferred when I used my easy press. So, and for all I know that when I go to use this, it, the edges, it'll transfer onto whatever white surface I have. So it's generally a good idea to protect your, your pressing surface. Just, it's just generally good advice. That is what I have decided. Because if I had protected this one initially, we wouldn't have had this problem. It would have just gone onto the paper. So I'll just, from now on, I'll just make it a habit to always protect my, my pressing surface. Okay, uh, Jody says, can you use parchment paper? No, uh, parchment paper, I don't think it's, first of all, it's not the same as butcher paper. And I think that it's a lot thinner. I haven't personally used parchment paper and I don't have any here to try, but they say to use butcher paper. So just get yourself some butcher paper and use that. Um, unless of course you want to experiment like I am. 
<laughs> okay, so what happens if we move our heat source around? Because Cricut says that we need to put it straight down onto our project like this and lift it straight up. What if we go like this? You know, like the way you might move an iron or just move it a little bit. I would like to find out because I want to see what happens. So let's protect our mat again. Let's get rid of this beat up one. Go back to our nice big one and put our white cardstock on our sheet. Okay. And we're going to take our t-shirt swatch. Again, this is 100% polyester and we know it works great with the infusible ink. And we're going to preheat it for 15 seconds, like the instructions say. Um, oops, I saw a question there. Uh, Joy says, would you compare the hearts with no preheat with this one, please? Yes. So I will show everything when we're all done. So hang, into the, hang out to the end. And we will put them all side by side so you can see all of the variations. And Greg is writing little labels for each one so we can see what each thing was. So just hang with me. Okay, this is going to be our test of moving the heat source around when we have our infusible ink. So we preheated it. We didn't let roll it yet. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so this we're going to test uh, moving our easy press around to see what happens when we do that and why it's important that we don't move it around. All right, so we cover this up. Again, make sure your butcher paper is at least as big as the surface, your heating element on your easy press or your heat press. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I feel funny about doing this because I've been so careful all this time about not moving it. We're gonna just do this. Okay, so we're gonna press it down and turn on and then I'm going to kind of do this. Okay, as if I'm ironing a shirt, only I'm not quite because no one would iron a shirt. I guess they do like this or something, right? This is how it would do. Like I can see this being a beginner mistake when you just don't know what you should be doing, right? I mean, no one's told you that you should keep it still. Um, I'm really curious, is this gonna like mess it up? Is it gonna look okay? I don't even know. Uh, Jesse says, what happens if you used a colored piece of cardstock instead of white? If we have enough hearts, I will test that. Okay. So that is, t I can't, like, I'm not seeing anything right now. Like, it's not like bleeding around the edges or anything. I mean, this transfer sheet is pretty sticky. So um, now if your your design was really cut close on your on your transfer sheet, it's possible it could have moved when I did that, but this one didn't because we have plenty of transfer sheet on it to stick to our shirt. So let's see if anything happened when we did that. Well, I see nothing. It looks perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I can't see a single thing here. It looks really sharp. Uh, so that was fine. I mean, I guess I can see how maybe it's an issue, but it wasn't an issue this time. So moving our heat source around, it, this is what it looked like, which is no big deal. So Greg will label this one for us. All right, um, next on my, yeah. So Susan says, I wonder about moving it with a pattern transfer. Yeah, like maybe we would see it, but like if like there is no, there's the edges are super sharp on this. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to hold this up so that you can see. Can you focus that for me, Greg, so they can see? There we go. So can you see how sharp those edges are right there? That looks pretty amazing. So there's no issues with blurring at all. And if there was going to be some blurring in the center, we would see it at the edges as well, I think. So, all right. All right, so the next thing I wanted to try was um, pressing twice with more than one color. Because when I did my layered t-shirt video, I, I taught you to layer it before you press it. 
but what would happen if we pressed the heart and then we took another piece of infusible ink and pressed it again, right? So would the color change? Would the, would the heart change? And I'm really curious and we're going to find out. In fact, no, I guess we should do a new one. I don't want to, I don't want to mess with any of the ones that we already have. Okay. So I'm going to lint roll that and we're going to preheat it. Make sure there's nothing on that butcher piece of butcher paper, which there is not. Uh, preheat it for 15 seconds. <clears throat> and then we're going to press a red heart. And then I'm just going to cut a piece off of another, like I have some floral over here. And we're just going to cut off a piece of that and put it on top of what's already there and see what happens. Oh, I went too long. It's fine. Okay. So we've preheated that. So let's do our first layer, which is a red heart. And we will press that for, oops, make sure that's on there nice and smooth. It's hot. Be careful. Okay. We'll press that for 40 seconds. Okay. So we're going to be doing two presses with this one, or we could do even a third, you know, just to see it, like, because I know that I know I saw somebody uh, layer with like both multiple presses instead of putting all your layers onto one transfer sheet, which is what I recommend. It's it's just easier. All you don't have to worry about lining things up, and you don't have to worry about color changing or anything like that. Um, which is what Cricut says can happen if you press it again. It can change the color. So we will find out if that's what happens. Looks like it's ready. Okay. So let's take off the butcher paper. Renee says my butcher block paper is brown. Does it make a difference? I don't know. I don't, I've never tried it with the, uh, with the um, brown stuff. It probably is okay. I don't know. And Denise says, where did I get this lint roller? Isn't it cute? I got it off Amazon. I have it linked in most of my tutorials. Um, and probably someone from my awesome team will link it for you. So because they are totally awesome. I think Sarah just linked it in fact. So here is a red layer, which came out great. Now I want to just cut off a little, I'm just gonna be lazy and we're not gonna use our Cricut to cut this. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of, I do need some scissors though. Where are my scissors? Oh, yes, Greg was using them, okay. I'm just gonna cut a little, square and we're just going to put a square in the middle of here. I'll take a, a pretty flower and we'll put a square right in the middle of our infusible ink project. And I will even also use a piece of tape so we can see if that makes any difference because I have to keep this in place because just this little piece here is not going to work. It will move around on me and it will cause issues. So we're going to tape this down so we can see and then we'll know if the tape also creates any kind of issue when we press over it. And this tape I'm using here is the Cricut heat resistant tape. All right, so I'm gonna tape that right under there, just like that. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen here. Um, Cassandra says, do you have to use butcher paper? That's what Cricut says. That's what I recommend, it's working for me, so. Don't use wax paper and don't use freezer paper. All right, so let's go ahead and press this. I'm gonna press it for the same amount of time because that second piece of infusible ink transfer sheet's gonna need additional time to, tr to transfer, right? So we can't like lower the time. So 40 seconds and we'll see what happens. Pamela says uh, she's been having issues with her maker cutting through the infusible ink carrier sheet. I have, oh, and you talked with Cricut and they're going to send you a new housing and blade. So, well, you should wait till you get the new housing and blade, but I had some other ideas in my Facebook group. If you come in there and search on infusible ink and maker, I suggested changing your custom settings to have less pressure until you found the right pressure point. For some reason, people on makers specifically, um, I've seen people mention this before. Now I tested it myself and I didn't have this issue but that doesn't, I totally believe that some of you are, right? So I wasn't able to duplicate the issue, which meant I couldn't come up with a solution for everybody. But 
I think that if you just keep doing small tests with lo less and less and less pressure, which you can change in your custom material setting, that you would find the sweet spot for your maker with infusible ink. Um, someone that, I can't quite see that one. Oh yeah, so Vicki says, can you use an iron with the infusible ink? As a matter of fact, I have an iron here and we're gonna do that um, right after the next test. So yes, we're totally going to try an iron to see what happens. All right, so this test here is what happens if we put two layers of infusible ink, um, if we press it twice, right? So this is, um, the heart was the first pressing and this second layer was done afterwards. So we had to press this red twice. So we're going to compare it with the other reds to see what happened. I'm gonna take off this tape to see. Um, okay, so we can see here, that's interesting, the transfer tape definitely left a mark. In fact, let me lift this up so you can see. Greg, can you come um, sharp, or, you know, focus on this so they can see it? If it actually it looks like it's focusing this time all on its own okay this is fine greg so can you see how the transfer tape discolored the second layer of infusible ink here and made a stripe down the middle which is exactly where that transfer tape was so putting transfer tape on top of an already pressed image is not a great idea now let's look and see what happens how the red compares with a red that we only pressed once to see if it changed color. Um, maybe just a tiny bit. It looks maybe a little bit lighter. Can you guys see that? It's just maybe, just the tiniest little bit. It's hard to say for sure. Maybe a little bit, maybe not. So it looks like it, lo it was okay um, to press a second time, but the transfer tape, was not okay. And what will happen, this transfer tape is the same basically as this transfer carrier sheet. So if your layer has anything like, you know, your second layer, it's going to leave that mark on there the same with this tra this carrier sheet. Transfer t the, the tape or the carrier sheet, you're still gonna get this kind of like um, bleeding or whatever, whatever this is. Like it's just light, it's like I think what it did is it actually, where is it? Here it is. I think it transferred to the tape. Can you guys see how it's pink there? So that the tape picked up some of the red and it transferred on, it infused into this material when we pressed it a second time. So I don't recommend that you press this way. If you have um, a layered image, layer it before you press it. So you layer all together on one piece, one piece of the plastic, uh, the plastic carrier sheet. Just like I've taught you in my layered t-shirt tutorial for infusible ink and that's all step by step in there all right so that's this one Greg, can you put a label on that one please all right so now i want to see what happens when we try writing directly on a shirt with a infusible ink pen okay because i've been curious about this a lot of people have asked so we're going to do this by the book we're going to preheat it oh by the way can you guys see some of the infusible ink transferred to this piece of butcher paper? So kind of see it's kind of pink right there. Can you see that? It's really light here. If I hold it down here, it might be easier to see. So we do not want to reuse this piece because this can and will probably will transfer to our white shirt. So this is now for the recycle bin. All right, so let's use a new piece. And we're going to reheat it for 15 seconds. Just like Cricut has taught us. Oh, thank you, Mary. I'm really happy that you enjoyed my videos. <laughs> um, I really appreciate it. You guys make this fun. Okay, so we've preheated this. Now let's try drawing on our shirt. I, these are the neon um, pens. So the 0.4 tip pens. I also have the markers. If you we, maybe we should try those too. Hey Greg, can you get the markers out? They're in the cabinet right down here under the Cricut. Thank you. All right, so let's try. Let's try the bright colors here. Yeah, they'll they'll say um like one millimeter instead of, or one 
they'll say 1.0 at the bottom instead of 0.4. Like I didn't even know if this will work like this guys. So we're just going to find out. Let's try. Yeah. So this one, can you open up that one for me and we'll compare the two. So let's just try. Oh, well, it's definitely letting me draw on here. So here's a circle. We'll put a little, little face in here. Okay, so that's a little face and let's make a sun. I'm surprised I didn't think that these would really transfer to the shirt, but they're okay. They're not super vibrant though. I mean, can you see that? Like if I were to put these onto a piece of laser paper instead, which we should do, we should compare so you can see the difference. But I am drawing right onto the shirt right now. Thank you. Will you give me a piece of lace laser paper, Greg? There, it's right over here. Thanks. And let's make a um, oh, I don't a flower. Let's make a flower over here. And uh, that's not a very good flower. Whatever. You guys will forgive me. <laughs> and I will make a stem. Okay. And then I'm also going to try with the the thicker markers too, so we can see if there's any kind of a difference. Thank you. Now, if I were to use the laser paper right now instead of the this, let's see what happens when I do the exact same thing. So here is a face. Um, now, right now, right away, I can see that it comes out much clearer on this. I'll hold this up so you can see it too. Like this is kind of light and it's not, the fabric gets in the way of, um, you know, it's like, it's like there's a weave to this, so it's not a nice smooth surface the way the laser paper is. So it doesn't come out of the pen as easily and it's, yeah, you know what I mean, right? Okay, and then there's this. Okay, so now let me try the markers. So those were the pens. Here's the markers. Whoops, we just lost our little, so let's set that there. So the markers are more than twice as thick. So if we make a flower here, it's going to look a lot better. Really, it's a lot thicker. Let's try the flower over here with the marker. Okay, so it's bleeding a lot. I'm going to show that you guys this in just a second. It's bleeding a lot when I use the marker and it's super hard to draw with the marker. It's snagging on the fabric um, and it looks like a big giant mess, frankly. <laughs> Is it bleeding through? And it's also bleeding through. So the pens weren't so bad. The markers are really not cool. <laughs> this is not, this is not, I mean, I don't know, maybe a kid, you know, maybe it would be fine, but let me show you what this looks like up close. So on the left, we have drawing right onto the fabric and on the, wow, it's really bright. You can't really see, can you? It's like just fading out. Let's see if I can get this to focus better. Um, this is good as it's gonna get because it's just very light in this room. So, but you can hope. Sorry, not really. It's not really wanting to show us, but hopefully you can see how it, what a mess that is there, right? It's just really bled through a lot. Maybe if I hold it down a little bit more, there. Maybe you can see that better. It's just the fabric just soaked it up and it snagged as I did it. Whereas when we put it on the laser paper, it's nice and clear and sharp. So now let's see what happens when we actually press it. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna cut out this little heart here. We're gonna press this also while we're at it so we can see how it compares. So just gonna cut out this little heart, I mean this little flower. And we're gonna tape it on and we're gonna press it at the same time we press the rest of these things. I'm just going to put it down here in the corner, right here. Then we got to tape that down or else it won't stay. I think there's two sheets of paper there. Yes. Because I really don't think that what you're going to want to actually write on your surface is like this. I think that, I mean, I think it's going to be unsatisfying and frustrating because t-shirts are not nice and smooth. They're woven. And it makes it a lot harder to just write with a marker on it. All right, let's just do it like this. Okay. 
And that tape, of course, is going to affect that, those sections that we did there, which we already know from our previous test. Okay, oops, let's put that down. Now let's press this and see what happens. Okay, and we're gonna press, oh, we need to change this because this is the marker and it has different requirements. So let's me go double check at the Cricut Easy Press heat transfer guide. And if we are using pens and markers um, on a t-shirt, oh, it is the same, so it's not a problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this, 40 seconds. Um, yes, so you guys are right. So the way that we would normally use the pens is to put them onto our sheet of laser paper and then transfer that onto our project. That's the way I did it in the two projects that I've done previous with the infusible ink. Um, and that's the way you're really going to want to do it. But it's interesting to see what happens when we do the things the way we're told not to do them, right? Like, I don't know, it's fun. Sometimes you discover new and interesting things or you just understand why we don't wanna do things that way. And then you don't take the shortcuts, right? And then mess up your project. Okay. So let me take this off. All right, so um, it doesn't look like anything really bled any more than it already had. So, I mean, you know, it looks, it looks okay. It's not smooth, but you know, the, the designs, the pen didn't go on smoothly, but it looks like it did. The pens, um, not this one. I think this is the marker. Nope. This is the marker. We need to keep these separate. The pens work better transferring it directly to the shirt than the markers, which was a kind of giant mess here. Let's take this list one little bit off here and see how they compare. Yeah, so it looks a lot better. Um, with the laser sheet, it's clear and smooth. I'm gonna try this one more time. Hopefully you guys can see. And I'm gonna focus it so you can see this. Okay, so this is the one that we drew with the pen directly under the t-shirt. This is the one that we transferred with our laser paper. And you can see how clear and smooth those pen lines are versus um, this one, which is not. So it looks like it did work. It looks like it transferred fine. Did transfer, there's a lot of ink there and it transferred to our sheet of, so we protected our mat because of that. But um, you know, so maybe if you had a kid and you wanna just have them just doodle on a shirt or something, you could do that, right? So that's like, it just, it's probably not gonna be amazing and it couldn't make a giant mess, but it looks like it's possible. Okay, so that's that. Oops, let's put this one over here so we can compare that at the end. Okay, now let's try the iron because I know everyone wants to know about the iron. So let's make sure my iron is on. It always wants to turn off and put away our markers. Now, the thing about using an iron, there's a lot of problems with it. The first is that irons don't have temperature settings, so we don't know exactly what the temperature is, and that's important for infusible ink. Um, we have to guess. Okay, now I do have the infrared thermometer, so we can at least make a better guess than usual. <laughs> um, but, you know, how, we don't know how consistent that heat's gonna be either. That's the thing about the easy press and heat presses is that they're made to have consistent heat. They also have a different surface. So this is my Rowenta iron, my Rowenta Access Team iron. Greg got it for me a couple years ago. So it's got the steam vents on the bottom and this is the smallest easy press. And you'll see it's smaller than the smallest easy press. So if you were to do a big design, it would be a lot harder to use. And this feels like it's turned off, even though I was trying to keep it on. That's so we might have to come back to this. Like I don't feel any heat coming out right now. And I have it on its highest. So we'll come back to this because it's just, it, it turned off. All right, let's get a new sheet of white cardstock so we don't transfer last, our last project to this one. All right. 
So we're going to skip the iron for now. Don't worry, I will come back and we're going to try, see what happens if we don't press it long enough. So instead of pressing it for 40 seconds, let's try pressing it for 20 seconds, okay? All right, so let's take one of our t-shirts. This is again, 100% polyester and we're going to make sure it's clean. And then we're going to preheat it for 15 seconds, just like the directions say. Uh, Lori says, can you reuse the tape or is it a one-time use? You could reuse it if I think if it was still sticky and it didn't have anything transferred to it. So just like regular tape, you know, it's probably fine. I haven't used and reused any of mine, so I don't know yet, but I, th I think that it would be fine so long as it remains sticky. Okay, so we preheated this and we're gonna try this heart and we're gonna do it for 20 seconds instead of 40 to see if that makes any difference. Hot. <laughs> okay, do not burn yourself, this stuff is hot. All right, so 20 seconds. Again, light pressure and I, um, I interpret light pressure to mean just one hand. I'm not really pushing down. I'm just keeping it in place so it doesn't slide around or anything like that. So again, we're doing it for 20 seconds instead of 40, which is what Cricut recommends. So we can see what happens. Because I know um, just once in a while, we just accidentally forget to push that button and then we have to guess, right? And so what happens if we under guess? <laughs> That's my question. I want to see what happens. Um, Tanya says, have you tested pressing only part of the image and then another part? So I wanted to test that. In fact, um, yeah, so I, I think I have that on my list of things to do that we're going to try. So, because I know that some people have like, I wanted to do like half the heart and then do the other half of the heart to see what happens. Um, to see, cause Cricut says that there might be a, a slight line in the middle if we did that. And I wanted to see what would happen. All right. Well, that was obvious. So this is 20 seconds and uh, it definitely didn't get a chance to finish it putting the ink onto the surface there. So 40 seconds is what we want to use, not 20 seconds. That one was nice and clear. All right. Let's set this one over here. All right. So um, how are we doing on this? It doesn't feel hot at all. It's turned on. Let's see what our thermometer says. It says um, 160, 151. So it's obviously on right now, uh, but not anywhere near hot enough. We need to get it a lot hotter than this. It is on the highest, it's on max. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on. You wanna check to see, make sure I've got it like actually turned like everything. Greg's gonna check it. Make sure I've got it all. There's something weird going on with it. Thanks, Greg. All right, so <clears throat> what would happen if we press the same transfer sheet again? A lot of people ask me this. Are the transfer sheets reusable? I get this one all the time. So let's take one of our transfer sheets that we've used. So here's one right here. And I mean, you can see there's not a lot of color here, but it's pale pink. So would the pale pink transfer? We're gonna find out. So <clears throat> let's take our polyester swatch, polyester t-shirt swatch, clean that up and preheat it for 15 seconds. I feel like my paper is warping a little bit. Let me get a new piece of paper. I don't know why that happened though. <clears throat> that might be a good reason to, to change your cardstock. If your cardstock starts to warp or anything, um, that's going to make it difficult for it to, for your design to have a, to press down. You can see it's kind of wobbly. Can you see that a little bit? Kind of wobbly. So I'm going to switch to a new sheet right now. Thank you. Okay. So here is a new sheet of nice flat white cardstock. Okay, and we are going to try pressing this used transfer sheet onto this one to see what happens, to see if any of the color will transfer again. 
because everyone asks me this, if the transfer sheets are reusable. I always say no, so let's see what happens. All right, 40 seconds. And is the iron okay? It's just not really heating up. Greg? Yeah, it's the... It's not going to get anywhere near hot enough. We can try anyways, guys, because you want to know, but it's at like 165, which doesn't even, it doesn't feel hot enough to me at all. I don't even, it doesn't feel normal. Maybe I've just had it been sitting here too long and it knows I'm not using it or something. And so it's like in power save mode. I'll, I'm going to try like ironing something right now and we'll see what happens. Kind of put it back into action. I don't, I don't know. All right, so this test is um, using a transfer sheet again because so many people ask me this question. We're going to find out if we can reuse a transfer sheet at all. Now, there's no way it's going to be as vibrant, guys. It's just not. But I'm curious to see if even a light image transfers. I mean, it kind of looks like it did just from looking at it right here. Um, yeah, very light. <laughs> So this is what it looks like the second time we've used this transfer sheet. So it's a very, very pale pink heart. And unfortunately, I also don't know how well this will last. I don't know if not enough of the ink has transferred to actually be permanent or not. I just, I have no idea. We would have to wash this to find out. And maybe it stays like this. Maybe it doesn't, right? It does look pretty solid though. It doesn't look um, variable or anything like that. So that may be fun to experiment with taking a second you know like if you had like like my mandala which is a really cool design just pressing it onto something and then washing it to see if it actually stayed there or if it was just sort of a ghost <laughs> that wasn't that meant to last sherry says how many watts is your iron i don't know let's see um 1500 watts it says so I'm going to try ironing my mat right now in case it needs this. Hey, Greg, we label this one here as our second um, or reused transfer sheet. Oh, yes. Thank you. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with my iron. It's a good iron. I really like it. But like right now, it just seems like it's not heating up. Is there something under my mat? No. <clears throat> yeah, I could try turning it off and back on. I don't even know how to do that. I always just turn it off, like literally unplug it. Um, there, that's off. I think that says off. It says minimum actually, it does not say off. So I'm just gonna unplug it from the wall and we're gonna reset it. My iron is not blinking, so it's on. You see the light there? Yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna unplug it from the wall So see the light's off now. I'm going to plug it back in. The light's back on and we're going to um, give it another few minutes to heat up. All right. So I had another question here. Someone asked me what would happen if we drew on a fusible ink transfer sheet with a pen and then pressed it. Would you guys like to see that? April, don't worry about having missed it because there's always, you can always watch the replay afterwards. So um, it's not going to be a problem. You can watch the whole video when we're done. All right. So let me take our blue marker and we're going to draw right onto our, our red heart to see what happens. So we're going to use our infusible ink marker and we're going to draw on our transfer sheet and see what kind what what happens after we do that so i'm going to make a little cute little face cute little face a little little mouth little cheeks there okay so i've drawn on this transfer sheet with my infusible ink marker and let's see what happens when we go to press it to transfer it Okay, so this still looks fine. It's still clean. Let's see how my... It doesn't feel like it's any warmer to me. Let me check this, though. 
one it's exactly the same temperature it was so it's just not heating up i don't know there's nothing wrong with it it's not even that old guys so i don't know how how hot do irons normally get i feel like they get hotter than 165 degrees don't they normally greg do you know is there something wrong with that iron because <laughs> i really want to test this tonight do we have another iron that we could use do you know okay i don't think so all right <clears throat> all right so let's preheat this we'll just test it anyways guys see what happens it's just nowhere near as hot as um the easy press so i feel like it's just gonna yeah so wendy says each outlet has to be put out to the same level of voltage independent we have a lot of lights and the easy press is going the camera is going we might just not have enough but the easy press isn't having a problem getting up to temperature so why should the iron that's what i want to know like it should be fine right all right so we preheated this so let's take our infusible ink transfer sheet and with our infusible ink marker that's been drawn on it and we're going to put it and we're going to see how it transfers miranda says oops Miranda says 310 to 400 degrees is what an iron should get to. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I mean, my iron works. I use it all the time. So maybe my iron just sucks and I never realized that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's press this and see what happens. Let's see if this is getting any hotter. No, it doesn't even feel hot at all to me. I think that we must be, it's just maybe it's just not getting enough juice right greg might be go, going to find me an extension cord he just left the room so he might be going to find me one and we can put it into a different outlet in our house to see if that makes a difference he's awesome <laughs> esther says it's because the iron is the cricket brand oh yeah let's try that that gross iron yeah we should totally do that one i love that iron and then my kid used it to like iron on stuff and it's it got transferred to it it's icky now a good test so we found another iron we're going to try that one okay so this is our test of the infusible ink with marker the infusible ink marker drawn onto it to see if it works so let's see what happens i mean i expect the blue will turn like purple or something right okay so this is interesting now i don't think this has anything to do with the ink but we have ghosting in the middle i have no idea why um i think there's nothing under my mat everything seems fine but the, so this in the center what we, this is called ghosting and this happens usually when there's not even pressing so if i moved it accidentally when i placed it down this can happen if it's not even enough if there's any kind of like i don't know maybe my paper is warping and i should be using a new sheet already it's possible but setting that aside the infusible ink marker transferred along with the infusible ink transfer sheet just fine you guys see that it looks just fine there yeah so even though it's ghosting in the middle Denver says, have I tried it without lint rolling the t-shirt? I haven't. And honestly, I think that, uh, like, like, I don't know. I don't know how much lint rolling really helps. I, I mean, I think that if you live in a place that's really dusty or has a lot of like dog or cat hair, it's probably going to be really important. But otherwise, it's probably not going to be super important. So I didn't even bother to test that one. I'm just doing it. Um, you're going to have to decide on your own environment and whether or not you think how, how important that is. But, you know, I mean, if this is your shirt and you got one shirt, like why not lint roll it? <laughs> why not just be careful? Okay. So let's set this one aside. So is there water in this? No. Okay. So we've got another iron. We've got a black and Decker classic iron that we're going to try. We've got it up on max and we're going to, we're going to try this one and see if this one will heat up to um, a temperature that we need. Lisa says, is that blue or purple? So this was blue. This was the blue marker that I put on this, but it comes out purple because the, this is all transparent ink. So whatever surface you see underneath of it 
is going to, it's all, the colors are all going to blend. So if I were using a blue shirt, this heart would have turned out purple because it was blue underneath. And because we're putting blue on top of red, it turns out purple. It's a bluish purple, but it still looks purple. Okay, so put that there. All right, so let's see. Um, what would you guys, I, Suzanne, I do have an awesome support team. Aren't they amazing? I see Miranda and I see Sarah here. I think Randy is here as well. And Greg is over here helping me um, with like everything here on site. And my team is not here. They're in other parts of the United States. Aren't they amazing? I, they're so amazing. I am very, very fortunate to have such an awesome team. Um, okay, so let's see. It's starting to feel like it feels like it's actually a little warmer than the other one is already. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so my other iron is currently at, you guys see this at all? See, see how messed up that is? That's my, my daughter. All right, so it's at two uh 232 right now so we'll give it a, a few more minutes to see how hot we can get it and in the meantime i have um a, one more heart that we could do something else with so is there anything that i haven't tested tonight that you would like to see me try so let me know and whoever whatever we get the most responses on is what i will try so shout it out um let's see and i'm checking in for comments Patty says, have you ever had the Cricut Infusible ink pens dry it before you even use them? No, I have not. I have had great luck with my pens, so no issues at all. Uh, Chrissy says, how should we store our markers? I recommend you store them in a cup like this. So tip down, right? Just like this. This is how I store all my markers because then the ink is flowing to the tip and it's where it needs to be and it's ready to go as soon as you're ready to use them. So I recommend that you store your all your Cricut pens like this. Um, Michelle says, Jennifer, which size of easy press is the most practical or most often used? And is the mat necessary? I personally prefer the nine by nine size, but with the introduction of infusible ink, I like, and I'll show it to you. It's very big. I like my giant <laughs> 10 by 12. I think this is. And the reason I really like the big size now that we have infusible ink is because it really works best when you can just press it once and not move it around and not press in two different sections. Ah, yes, that's what someone asked for. Um, if I were to get only one easy press, I would get this one. It's not as easy to handle, but it's going to be able to do all the projects. So it's the, I think it's the better investment um, so that you're not hindered by the size of your easy press. And let's see, Barbara says, could it be because your easy press is on the same circuit and it's taking away from it getting as hot as it could be? Yeah, it's possible that, that is it. But our easy press seems to be really hot. Like this feels very hot to me. Let's, let's test it and see what its temperature is. It says 300 and 330 degrees. Unless that's the highest this goes. <laughs> Does this temperature this get any higher? Because I can't get any higher than this. It actually seems very, it should be at 385. It says it's at three, it's going up to 330, but no higher. So maybe that's the limit on this infrared thing. What does it say? Do you know, Greg, what the limit on this is? No. Okay. Let's see what our iron is right now. 200 and, wait, it depends on where I put it. Down here, it's 211. Up here, it's 250. So it's a little different. The easy press was consistent across its heat plate, but the iron wasn't. Sorry, my iron is so ugly, guys. It's There's a reason why I got a new iron. <laughs> yeah, let's we can, we can unplug the easy press and see if that... Yes, yeah, Suzanne says unplug the easy press. Before we unplug it, let's do that final test where we're gonna press the two sides independently, okay? So let's keep this in here for a minute. Let's do one more test. I'm gonna get rid of this paper because it's starting to warp on me. Okay, so we're going to take another one of our swatches, which again is 100% polyester. And we're gonna lint roll it just because we've done that for all of them so far. And that's what Cricut tells us to do. And we're gonna preheat it for 15 seconds. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this heart and we're going to do the two sides, the two halves of this heart separately. So we can see what happens if we have to do that. Like if we have a big image and we cannot possibly fit the whole thing and we have to sort of meet up in the middle, right? Okay. Because sometimes that's just the way it is. So let's place this on here. And be very careful, it's hot. Okay, so I'm going to do this half and then I'm gonna do this half, okay? So I'm gonna to try to get it in the, right down the center. I'm gonna do my best. All right, so we have to do each side for 40 seconds. Yes. <clears throat> Um, Brittany says, can you use a pillowcase instead of the transfer paper? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it. My concern would be that the pillowcase might have moisture in it. And um, no, I think that we wouldn't want to use a pillowcase because it could pick up, it'd be, be more likely to pick up the transfer. Plus, like you would have to go get a new pillowcase if it transferred. A new piece of butcher paper, which I think is what you're asking, you just get a new piece of butcher paper. So much cheaper than getting a new pillowcase. Okay, so I've done half the heart. Let's do the other half. Trying to get it right in the center. And that's the other problem, right? Is that it's hard to say exactly what the center is. But I'm trying. So. The thing that's nice about using this butcher paper instead of a piece of material is that when it accidentally transfers to the butcher paper, we can just replace it very easily. I've also heard that we shouldn't use Teflon sheets because they can trap moisture in your fabric and cause an issue. And also they're ruined once you accidentally transfer um, any of the infusible ink to it. So butcher paper, I think really is the wisest thing to do. All right, so we're almost done. And then we had to press this twice, so it's certainly conceivable that I moved it around or we, we're gonna have ghosting, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. Let's see what happened. All right, now I'm gonna unplug the easy press, by the way, just in case that is causing an issue. Let's turn that off first. All right, so that's unplugged completely. All right. Let's see what happens when we press our heart um, half and half. So I can see a line down the center. It's faint, however. It's not really pronounced, but it is there. It's right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to try to hold this up a little bit so you can see. Um, and it looks like it's ghosted just a little bit there, too. It's really washed out. Sorry. It just... Very, the light is very bright in this room so that we can see everything. Hold it down a little bit more. Can you see that? There, there, you can see it better. So there is a slight line right through the heart. So maybe if you lined up your design so that if there was any color variation, it looked fine because this looks fine to me, right? Because <laughs> it's right down the center of the heart. So that's something to keep in mind that if you plan out in advance where you're going to press it, and you don't mind that there be a little variation there, then it's not a super big deal, right? Okay, let's see um, how our iron is doing. Because we're going to try this no matter what, even if I can't get it any hotter than this. All right, so the hot, it is at, it is really not that hot. Sorry, guys. Um, should we give it a few more minutes to see if it gets any hotter with the Cricut Easy Press turned off? This, we're gonna check to see how high it goes. Okay, fine. All right, so let me take some questions while we're deciding what to do with the iron. Um, Maria, uh, Denise says, how long should we let the transfer cool before removing? Cricut says to let it cool completely. So in all the other videos I did, the tutorials I did, we actually sat here for a few minutes and waited until it cooled. But in all the ones I'm doing tonight, I'm not letting it cool um, because we just don't have time to do that. And so it's possible that the color might be a little bit more vibrant. I don't know. We didn't test that. So <laughs> I'm, I don't really feel like it. This, this red looks the same as all the other reds that I've done. So I feel like it's okay. And what have I not asked? And there was a question also. Michelle wanted to know if the 
size of the of the mat was necessary. And yes, our first test we did, we did we used a towel instead of a mat and it was not good results. So I would say the mat is necessary. Melanie wants to know how much physical pressure in pounds would you say is light press? And is the easy press heavy? I have physical limitations regarding pressure and weight. So there, I don't know how much pounds, but I simply just rest my hand on it for light pressure. And I'm really not pressing down at all. Um, that's what Cricut says to do. So like my hand is on it to keep it stable and that's it. So I don't know. What does my hand weigh? You know, and what does my arm weigh? I don't know. 15 pounds, if I were to guess, something like that. Um, and Kay says, can you do a layered project with the infusible inks? You totally can, Kay, and I have a whole tutorial on it and I show you step-by-step -step how to do that. And that is my flip-flop t-shirt. So definitely check that out and see. Let's see if this has gotten any hotter since the last time we checked. It has not. So let's just try it anyways, guys, because it's 8.15 and I'm hungry. And we're going to want to have dinner. Oh, look. Oops. <laughs> All right, so this will be our last test. If you guys have questions about things I didn't try, you're welcome to leave it here. Can you get me the piece of paper? We've gone through all of our paper now. Whatever reason, it's just maybe because we're using the little easy press. That's a good point. So when I was using the big easy press, I didn't have this kind of like indentation going on um, because it was the same size as my mat. But now that I'm using the small one on this larger mat, I'm having it, the paper is getting pushed down as I, as, I, as I do it. And I'm having to change this sheet a lot more. Okay. So we're going to try our last test, which is to um, use our iron for better or for worse <laughs> and see what happens. I haven't been able to get either iron any hotter than what they are right now. So... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there's an issue with the thermometer. It's always possible that there are they are hot enough and it's not it's not recording. I'm not sure. We're just going to do it anyways. All right. So we have to preheat it with that iron. So I'm going to preheat it for 15 seconds. Uh, like it feels. It already doesn't feel like it's not as stable. It's not as flat. I feel like, can you see how it's kind of pushing up on my paper already? It's interesting. All right, well, I preheated it. Okay, so let's just give it a try and see what happens. I don't feel like this is going to work very well, though, guys. Sorry. But hey, we'll have tried it. <laughs> What's for dinner? Um, I don't know. Alexa's making dinner tonight, and I'm not sure what she's making. She makes this dinner a lot. She's a very good cook. We are very fortunate. Okay. Greg is also a great cook, but Alexa, I think she likes to cook more than Greg does. Would you say that's true, Greg? She's way better. She, he says that she's way better at it. <laughs> All right. So since we can't get this hot enough, I'm going to do it for longer than 40 seconds. Okay. Because I, I don't know what else to do. I just want to be able to try the iron with you. Let's check and see what it says it is again. 200 and actually it says 285 okay so that's almost 300 degrees so let's just set it straight down like this and again I'm just going to use light pressure just like um, we're doing with the easy press so just have my hand on it to keep it stationary <laughs> and uh I do know that Alexa is baking bread for hamburgers tomorrow night. That part I know because I saw her with a dough and she was going to let it rise. So she's really awesome. So I don't have a timer going. So we're just going to go for approximately one minute. It's going to guess here, guys, because there's no, the heat press guy does not tell us what to do with an iron because Cricut does not recommend that we use an iron. So, you know, I don't know. We're just, we're just flying by the seat of our pants right now see what happens when we use an iron with infusible ink. <laughs> um, I just, I know it doesn't feel like it's hot enough. And other than that, and also it feels like different. The surface feels different to me. Like it's not a big flat square thing, right? It doesn't feel like it's contacting 
the surface the same way that the easy press does where it's this nice flat like press down right like these irons were made for ironing clothing not for doing our the projects that we're doing right now where we need like super consistent heat okay that's probably long enough look how it scorched my uh, paper there that's interesting all right let's just give it a little time um, Allison, you haven't got your easy press out of the box yet. You should totally do that and make a project because it's no fun when it's in the box. Um, Debbie asked about steam holes. Were you asking if my, my iron had steam holes in it? This one. So yeah, I think the steam holes would also leave marks on another project. My other iron. Where's my other iron, Greg? Do you have it? Cause I want to show everybody what we mean by steam holes. So this is my good iron, and you can see it's got steam holes in the bottom of it. Micro Steam 300, it says, I feel like these holes would absolutely make a difference when we pressed it. But we didn't use this one, we used my old and busted iron, which still heats up fine, it's just gotten all gunked up from my daughter's craft projects. And we just left it that way because she still does projects with it, so what's the point of cleaning it? <laughs> Um, but we have it on that's hot. So this is the Black & Decker Classic. We have it on the highest setting. And it was reading 285 degrees when we tested it. So let's see what happens. It's sticking to it. I don't know why. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> um, well, it's not so bad, is it? <laughs> That doesn't look so bad. It's not quite as solid. Um, it looks a little bit like uh, cloudy. We'll call it cloudy, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so let's compare this with one that is good. So we did this one here in two parts and this one here was nice and solid. So let's stick this one next to it. Looks pretty similar, doesn't it? I mean, this one looks just a touch cloudy, just a touch, but if I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't see it. So, hey, that's awesome. So those of you who don't have an easy press can experiment with your iron. Just you're gonna have to get it as hot as you can. You're gonna have to do it for a little longer and test first. Don't go and ruin your shirts with um, your iron that are expensive and then get super bummed out. And say, Jennifer said it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's compare everything and see how we did. Can you make a tag for this one too, Greg? And I will clean off my surface. Awesome. This was fun. Was this fun, guys? Did you learn a lot? Because I know I sure did. There's all these rules all the time about what we should and shouldn't do. And sometimes it's really fun just to try it anyways and see what happens. We can discover interesting things or interesting effects that I really enjoy. Denise says, how long should we press with the easy press? So Cricut will tell you in their heat press guide how long they think it should be. So they, they will tell you. So you use the, the, the guide to figure it out. So you don't have to guess. But what I did tonight for all of the easy press too, I used 40 seconds at 385 degrees, just so you know. So that was our test, except for the iron, which was a lower temperature and we did it for about a minute. All right, so we have quite a few of these. So we're gonna compare all of these so you guys can see how they worked out. Now again, we are using 100% polyester t-shirt. Oh yes, it's the Hanes Cool and Dry shirt that I got off Amazon that I really liked. So this is without the cardstock. Uh, Janine said, did, it have the, did the iron have the steam setting on? No, it did not have the steam, the steam on. Uh, we turned that off. This is reusing it. This is putting it on directly. We'll put that one up here because it's so different. Can you see that one? Move everything down a little bit, I guess. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Yeah, I did not use any steam. I really don't. I, they say not to have moisture, so I wouldn't want to do that. Like I did not think that that would be a good idea. So no steam did I did I use on that iron. There it was turned off in both cases. Let's see, we have this one here. 
This is the first one we did. No, it was the second one we did. So let's put that here. And this is the first one we did. All right, so I will go through these one more time before we end for the evening. So this one here is done without using the easy press mat. And you can see there was ghosting in the middle because the towel was not um, even all the, across. It's like a cotton towel, right? It's just the nature of a towel. This is without preheating it, saw no difference. This is pressing twice, um, first one transfer sheet, then a second one, and you can see the tape mark where the second transfer sheet was. This is a used transfer sheet, so we did it twice to see if we could get any more ink out of it, and as you can see, we got very little. This is without using cardstock to protect our mat, and the only reason, so this would be our control, because nothing weird was done to it other than us risking our mat, which actually turned out to be okay. This is a um, where we moved our easy press around kind of like this to see if it made a difference. And in this case, it did not. This is pressing it in two parts, two halves, first the right half, then the left half. And it left a very faint line down the center. So just, just very faint. This is only pressing for half the time that it recommended. So 20 seconds instead of 40 seconds, so you can see a lot of ghosting, not enough time for the ink to actually infuse into the surface of the material. This is us drawing onto the um, easy, the, sorry, the infusible ink transfer with an infusible ink marker so, to see how it would transfer. It did fine. And we think that the ghosting in the center was a user error on my part. We're not sure why that happened, but it shouldn't have anything to do with the, um, the, putting the marker on it. So, and then this was using an iron. Now I can say looking at this, that the iron looks, oh, <laughs> seriously, fine. We will put this here, Greg. Greg was definitely here. <laughs> this, the iron, it doesn't quite look as sharp at the edges. I do want to say that. So the color is actually pretty good. It's a little bit cloudy, but the edges, they're not quite as sharp as the others, where they're very sharp on these others. So this was our crazy infusible ink test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back over and I will answer more questions because my team is awesome and they have been collecting them for me so I can see them. What are the cons of leaving the heat on too long? Is that why you would get shrinkage? Well, we didn't test that one, but so I don't know what would happen if it was on too long. I feel like not a lot would happen if it was on too long. Yes, it would shrink more. I have noticed that the transfer sheet shrinks at when we put it onto a shirt. Because um, in my test that I did last week, I saw it shrinking. Yes, last week. So you might see more shrinking when that happens. And that might actually make the design start to get fuzzy around the edges and not have a clear edge. So that I think would be the problem with going too long. But that's just a guess because we didn't test that one. And Carla says, so there's no point in using infusible ink unless we invest in the easy press. Well, I don't know. It doesn't that bad. I mean, here you might be able to see it a little bit better right here. Can you guys see that a little better? Because this camera is definitely um, easier to see. It's not so bright because we need this area over here to be really bright so we can see everything. It doesn't look so bad. This is using the iron, right? It's not so bad. So this is a, it's an option. And I think that it would be okay to experiment with and see if it worked out for you. I'm trying to hold it up so you guys can see that. So you can see how it's a little bit cloudy. See a little bit cloudy there. So, but still maybe an option. It's worth, um, it's worth trying, I think. I think it's worth trying. It's, it was a lot better than I expected it to be, especially since the temperature is really quite a bit lower than the Easy Press was. <clears throat> Um, let's see. What about white craft paper? It's cheaper on Amazon. I don't know. I haven't checked with white craft paper. I'm trying to think if there would be any reason why it wouldn't work. I can't think of any reason off the top of my head. Craft paper isn't treated like with wax or plastic. Um, it's probably okay, but use at your own risk. They say to use butcher paper. There's probably a reason. They, My guess is they've tested all of the different papers that we could use and decided butcher paper was the best. But, you know, I don't know for sure. So we would have to try all of them to find out. 
Um, Kim says, I'm wondering if you have tried the infusible inks on polymodal blend. I've seen some shirts at Walmart that carry this material. I've never even heard of modal blend. I think it might've been you that mentioned it to me the other day. And I'm like, I have never even heard of that. No idea. So no, I haven't tested any of them. And I haven't even seen that on a tag. I don't know what kind of fiber that is. I'm going to look it up real quick because I do know a lot about fibers. So if I can find out what kind of modal fabric, okay. Um, if it's a natural fiber, okay. Uh, modal fabric is a super soft fiber made from beech trees. So um, that means I think it's going to be very similar to rayon. Rayon, no, um, that's not what I'm trying to say. Not rayon. Um, rayon would, it would be like a polyester. Um, there's another fabric that I cannot remember the name of that's made from the pulp of trees. Greg, can you remember what it's called? We mix it with linen a lot. A linen blend. You guys know it's not a linen polyester blend. Linen... I can't remember what it is. Anyways, so we mix it with linen and we mix it with cotton because it's a natural fiber and it feels similar to linen and cotton. It has the same breathability that linen and cotton do, but it's natural. It's made from trees. So it's going to have the same, um, it's, I do not think, so it's gonna act like cotton. It's gonna be really similar to a cotton. It's a natural fiber. So if the polyester count is high, go for it. Like that's really what matters is that polyester count. Um, but if it's really low, like 20%, probably it won't be successful or it'll be very faded at least. <clears throat> that's my guess about knowing what I just read about modal fabric. Um, Kay says, can you do a layered project with the infusible inks? Yes, you can. And would you layer it first and then heat it or do each layer separately? You layer it all together on one, one sheet of your transfer. So you put your layers, you move your layers over to one sheet and then you press it all together. And I have a whole tutorial on this and it is my flip-flop t-shirt and it's called layered t-shirt with infusible inks or something like that. Hopefully a member of my team will link it for you or probably already has, but that, that whole thing is all about how to layer infusible ink. Um, maybe it is rayon. Bamboo would be the same thing. Let's look up what rayon is. Maybe I'm just, you know, <laughs> Let's see, what is rayon? Oh, yes, rayon is what I meant. Yes, so rayon is made from the pulp of trees. So, so rayon and bamboo and modal fabric are all gonna be really similar because of the, the source, the source. It's not a man-made, it is man-made. It's, it's like created by us, so it's not like cotton that grows on a tree, but it's still made from natural fiber to start with. So it's not gonna, the infusible ink is not gonna bind to it the way it does a polyester. So that's what's key here. Um, yeah. Awesome, okay. What other questions have I missed? Kat says, have you experimented with using colored paper? I have not because I feel really confident that I would be transferring that colored paper. So I just didn't even bother trying it. Um, I just didn't see any point and I had white paper, so I never even tried it. So if you, like, I would say maybe like a really light pastel, really light would be okay. But if it were me, I would just stick with the white and not even risk it. I do not want to see like a big pink square on my shirt where I pressed it because I was out of white paper and I used red instead. So that's my suggestion as far as that goes. Um, and I think I have I answered all of the questions. I think so. Is it flax? So flax, no, flax is linen. It's another word for um, linen. Flax is what we make linen from. I love linen. I love fibers in general. I know I talk about cricket all the time, but I'm actually a total fiber geek. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Well, I think that I've, I think I've gotten most of the questions here. Something about is it like spandex? No, it's not like spandex. So, okay. So one of the reasons that we're doing videos every night this week and having this little mini series about what not to do is because we're having a summer maker giveaway. We are, we are giving away a Cricut maker that was donated by Cricut and as well as an easy press too, and some infusible ink uh, bundle of different materials and copies of my Cricut coach playbook. And the giveaway ends at midnight on Friday and you have multiple chances to enter. You can actually enter every day 
And one of the ways that you enter is to put in the word of the day that I say during one of my videos. So today's word of the day is heat. So that is the word of the day. So you just type heat in the entry form at jennifermaker.com slash summer dash maker dash giveaway. And that will be one of your daily entries. And you can enter many times. You can also get extra entries for commenting and liking and sharing my videos and all that awesome stuff. Cool. So tomorrow night, what are we doing tomorrow night? Ah, yes. Vinyl and weeding is tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, we're going to look at all of the ways that we can have problems with vinyl and weeding, which of course, when we do that, whenever we do that, we learn all of the awesome tips and tricks for weeding and for using vinyl, which is what we'll be doing tomorrow night. And that will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time, just like every night this week. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for, to my team for your awesome help and support. I love you guys. And I will see you all tomorrow night. And don't forget, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow night. Bye.